two women Impact Wrestling should consider signing. Trey Miguel defeats Michael Elgin. Diona Perrazzo is on a per-appearance basis for now. And I come across a few really dumb articles. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Uh, As we know, Impact Wrestling has a tremendous, tremendous female roster. Uh, Deanna Perrazzo uh, is coming aboard on a per-appearance basis. Uh, It was reported that uh, she hasn't actually signed a contract with Impact Wrestling. Uh, It's going to be, as I said, a per-appearance basis for now. Uh, I think she just wants to test the waters and see how she likes it there with Impact Wrestling, which is is really a a, uh, smart move by Diona Perrazzo. Uh, no need to sign a three-year contract yet, but once she gets there and she sees just how wonderful it is at Impact Wrestling, I'm sure we're going to see um, pretty soon uh, Diana Perrazzo signs with Impact Wrestling. They'll make the official announcement. Uh, so so Diana Perrazzo, Kimberly, and Avea, all three with Impact Wrestling, but none of, the, none of them have actually signed a contract with them yet, and uh, hopefully they, they all will sign one too because uh, right now they have, uh, with all that talent there, uh, they have the best female wrestling roster of of any promotion right now in my opinion and and they could still get better they could still get better uh there are there are two women out there that i feel uh that are available that impact wrestling could bring in and make their already stellar female roster even better yes i know it's it's hard to imagine uh, that roster getting better but they can actually make it better uh the first name uh, i want to throw out there is uh, kelly klein Kelly Klein, former uh, Women of Honor uh, champion. I think she held the title uh, on two different occasions. Uh, Very, very, very talented uh, Kelly Klein. I've seen many of her matches, and hopefully you have too. Uh, Very talented. Uh, she's suffering from a concussion. Uh, I know she was released from Ring of Honor. Uh, I don't know what the full story is there. Uh, I know what I've seen on the internet uh, that uh, they didn't want to let her. Uh, from what I read, is they they didn't want to let her recover from um, from um, from her concussion sy- symptoms. And um, then they released her, and she was upset at that. And I don't, I don't know the full story. Uh, I think only Kelly Klein and, and Ring of Honor uh, know the full story, and I'm sure there are two sides to the story on that one. But nonetheless, she's a free agent, and I would love to see her show up in Impact Wrestling. Uh, and I, I, I'm almost certain that she wants to get back into professional wrestling. Uh, when she was at Ring of Honor, uh, she was an absolute killer absolute killer and uh very intimidated i actually interviewed her uh one time some time ago and uh i that was the only interview that i've done where i was actually a little nervous i was actually intimidated uh because of her in-ring persona uh but immensely talented and they bring her in she has a history with diona perrazzo they've had some tremendous matches you know a, a good scenario to bring her in would be um have her challenge Diona Perrazzo and uh, let them renew their rivalry and have let them have a series of matches. Uh, I, that would be absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't seen uh, Diana Perrazzo uh, against Kelly Klein, uh, go to YouTube. Uh, there's a few of them um, on YouTube. Uh, I think there were like two or three of them on, on YouTube from, from uh, Women of Honor. Uh, tremendous rivalry there. And again, I would love to see them renew that rivalry in Impact Wrestling. Um the the only winner there would be the fans, man. The only winner there would be the <laughs> would be the fans. Uh, so hopefully, uh, hopefully, Impact Wrestling has their eye on Kelly Klein, another woman that I hope Impact Wrestling has their eye on, and is one of the best wrestlers in my opinion in the world today. Her name is Lufisto out of uh she's out of up here in canada out of quebec 
absolutely tremendous, tremendous, tremendous talent. The the matches she's had, you, you have this, you have to watch the matches just to believe just how great they are. And I'm gonna go on record and say I have never seen a bad match that Lefisto was involved in. In in 2018, I was um, <clears throat> I was at a Smash Wrestling show up here in Canada. It was uh, the Canusa 2018 Canusa tournament, uh, where they have a Canadian uh, women wrestlers against uh, American women wrestlers, and her opponent, Lefisto's opponent on on that show, was Jordan Grace, and they absolutely tore the house down. I was on my feet for the entire match. It was so damn good. And Lofisto is so damn good. And I'm not gonna say she's one of the best women wrestlers in the world. She's one of the best wrestlers in the world, period. And for Lofisto not to be signed by a major promotion at this point in her career is an absolute travesty. Impact Wrestling, if they have any sense of 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 anything <laughs> they would have their eyes on Lefisto and they would bring Lefisto in to impact wrestling and there's a perfect scenario for her right now a perfect scenario for Lefisto right now and that would be to be the partner of Kimberly and have them feud with Jessica Havoc and Nevea. That would be such a tremendous feud. A tremendous feud. That's the perfect scenario right there to bring in Lefisto. And I I make a plea to Impact Wrestling, please bring in Lefisto. Trust me. If you you've had to have seen her. You, you've she's she's wrestled for Shine. She's a former Shine uh, uh, world champion. Uh, she's wrestled for so many promotions. Uh, C four. I saw her, and this for anyone who's was a fan of intergender wrestling. She's a mainstay uh, with with C four wrestling up here in Ottawa, and she had a match with Josh Alexander that ranks as one of my all time favorite matches. It was absolutely incredible from start to finish and it was a very believable match a lot of people are out there saying oh intergender wrestling is not real um it's i'm sorry it's, it's not good because it's not believable this match was one of the most believable matches i've ever seen in my life for the lofisto absolutely an incredible talent and impact wrestling should they should have brought her in a long time ago they should have brought Lefisto in a long time ago. Uh, so there you have it. So Kelly Klein, Lefisto would make the Impact Wrestling uh, women's division even more better than it is now. Even more stellar than it is now. And and as for the 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 per appearance um, the per appearance uh, basis that they have Kimberly and Avea and Diona Perazzo on, I I hope we see the announcement soon that all three of them have signed with Impact Wrestling because uh, that'll be fantastic. And uh, to think if we see Kelly Klein and Lefisto also signing with Impact Wrestling, oh my gosh, they, they, their their women's division would be absolutely untouchable. Absolutely untouchable. Uh, now back to Diona Perazzo. Um, I, want, I want to think: uh, How would they bring? What would they do with Diona Perazzo? I know she's on a per appearance basis, uh, as I as I've mentioned. So you think: How would they, how would they bring her in? Uh, they they can't they can't waste any time with her. They they can't you know build her up uh, to make her a, a contender for um, for Jordan Grace and the and the knockouts title. So here's what I'm thinking: Jordan Grace is going to be on the next set of tapings. You know, n no spoiler; it's all over the internet. Uh, but she's 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 going to be at the next set of tapings. I say have Jordan Grace come out, make an open challenge, and Diona Prazo accepts. Uh, whether Diona Prazo uh, wins or loses, it doesn't matter. Just have her accept and let let her have a stellar match with, with Jordan Grace. And um, and go from there. And and hopefully Diona Prazo will... Well, but, well, before, you don't want to just have her come in and lose right away. Let her, let her make the challenge. Jordan Grace says, you're new here. You have to prove yourself. And let her have one match against, um, I don't know, Tasha Steeles. One match against Tasha Steeles or, who, or, or somebody. And um, let Diona Prazo win that match. 
and then move on to uh, the world title match against Jordan Grace and let them have let let them have just a, a an absolute incredible match, and uh, then see where it goes from there. And hopefully, Diona Prazo will uh, will like what she sees with Impact Wrestling, um, and she will uh, sign that 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 three year deal. Uh, that's that's my hope. That's my hope. Uh, or you know, another way they could bring her in. Um, maybe they have a battle royal or something to determine the number one contender. I, I don't know. But um, but regardless, I I think however however they do it, uh, Diona Perazzo, um should come in and uh, just be the immediate challenger uh, for Jordan Grace. Uh, like I said, I think the best scenario, like I said, Jordan Grace making the open challenge. Answered by Diona Perrazzo. Diona Perrazzo gets one or two victories under her belt, then gets the title shot against Jordan Grace, and uh, then we go from there and we see see what happens. And uh, I think that's uh, that's how they should do it. So Trey Miguel, Trey Miguel defeats Michael Elgin in the number one contenders tournament. I got to admit, I didn't see it coming. I was shocked. I was surprised. I thought Michael Elgin was gonna was gonna win this thing. I I was on, I'm I'm speechless. I'm speechless, and I'm sure everybody else that was watching, or most everybody else that was watching, did not expect Trey Miguel to defeat Michael Elgin. Granted, granted, there was uh, some outside interference from Sammy Callahan. He distracted Michael Elgin by doing his uh, hacker thing, uh, which was a little confusing. I you would kind of think that uh, Ken Shamrock would have been uh, the one doing the interfering, trying to get back at Michael Elgin. I am. Oh, Sammy Callahan lost the match uh, last week to Michael Elgin wasn't uh, really taken out of the tournament like Ken Shamrock was by Michael Elgin. So you're kind of, you're kind of thinking, why is Sammy Callahan, uh, unless Sammy Callahan is doing a solid for, <laughs> for Ken Shamrock. Uh, but nonetheless, um, was into, uh, he interfered in the match and uh, cost Michael Elgin the match uh, to Trey Miguel. And so next week uh, we have uh, Trey Miguel, um, or this week coming up we have Trey Miguel uh, against Ace Austin to determine who the number one contender is. And um, everyone is now saying it's going to be Ace Austin. I disagree. I disagree. I think it's going to be Trey Miguel. But but I still think that Michael Elgin is going to be that number one contender, and he's the one that's going to get the shot at Tessa Blanchard. And the reason why I think that is I think now. Trey Miguel is going to, like I said, is going to defeat uh, Ace Austin, become the number one contender. Michael Elgin's going to come out either next week or or this week or, or the following week, and and say that um, Trey Miguel, you defeated me, but I, there was interference. I was distracted by Sammy Callahan. It wasn't fair. And then he could go on. I was the number one contender. I never got my shot. Uh, so I, I'm demanding uh, that you put that number one contendership on the line against me uh, because you, you didn't beat me fair and square. And then he's going to use that, well, if you're a real man, you'll, you'll, give me a, you'll give me an opportunity to get that number one contendership. And, um, and uh, Trey Miguel, of course, uh, will, uh, to, will give Michael Elgin that shot and Michael Elgin will defeat Trey Miguel to become the number one contender. That's how I feel it's going to go down. That's how I feel it's going to go down. I still think Michael Elgin is going to uh, be that number one contender. You give Trey Miguel a little rub there, a little push. Personally, I think it should have been Rohit Raju. Rohit Raju should have been in that spot, not Trey Miguel. Uh, but uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, Michael Elgin is going to be the one getting that shot. At Tessa Blanchard, who, by the way, is not going to be at the next set of uh, TV tapings, which is a little disappointing. She's apparently still stuck in Mexico. Uh, totally understandable, but a little disappointing. Um, but uh, but nonetheless, Michael Elgin is going to get that shot, and he's going to be the next uh, Impact Wrestling World Champion. Or, you know, if Ace Austin does win, if I'm wrong and Ace Austin does win, uh, uh, I still think Michael Elgin somehow is going to be, be that number one contender. Uh, Eddie Edwards, who I'm not sure is going to be, I'm uncertain if he's going to be at the next set of um, TV tapings. Um Elgin and Edwards could say, well, we had a shot and we never had our opportunity, so now we want to have a match with, with Ace Austin. Three-way dance to determine the number one contender. Michael Elgin wins. But nonetheless, no matter what scenario happens um, between Trey Miguel and Ace Austin, I really think 
that Michael Uggen somehow is going to get that number one contendership back and uh, become the Impact Wrestling World Champion. Um, I mean, Ace Austin and, and uh, Tessa Blanchard, they had a tremendous, ima- they had a tremendous match um, uh, not too long ago. I don't think uh, no, I don't think they she went um, one on one with Trey Miguel. I mean, I'm sure they could both have terrific matches, uh, but um, it's Michael Elgin. Michael Elgin's gonna get, Michael Elgin's getting that shot, and um, the belt's going around his waist, which is gonna make a lot of people happy. Um, unfortunately, because a lot of people don't like Tessa Blanchard as the as the Impact Wrestling World Champion. Me not included. I have no issue with it, but I know a lot of people aren't happy that uh, she's the Impact Wrestling World Champion. And uh, people are actually on, on uh, social media calling for her to be stripped of the, of the title because she hasn't, quote-unquote, defended it, defended it within the 30-day um, um, time frame that is the norm for anyone that holds the a professional wrestling world uh, championship. Uh, but um, with the pandemic going on, it's, it's understandable. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. It's, it's the pandemic's fault, so they can't really strip her of the title. And plus, it's professional wrestling. Uh, so uh, it's the rules can be bent. <laughs> they don't need to follow the rules. Um, they don't need to follow the rules verbatim. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, but but um, that's that's how I feel. That's how I feel. It's gonna it's gonna go down. Uh, so the north, the north were at the Diner Compound or Compound, uh, how it's spelled, and we got to see Wheels, and it was very interesting. I I kind of enjoyed this segment. It was a little cinematic uh, wrestling segment, and if you're wondering who Wheels is. Wheels is actually an uh, Ontario independent wrestler up here. He goes by the name of Steve Brown. He uh, works for uh, numerous promotions, um, one of them being uh, Alpha One Wrestling, which is uh, run by Ethan Page. Uh, so um, yep, Steve Brown uh, playing Wheels, and I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked um, I liked the character of Wheels. Uh, Cody Diener and uh, I guess Wheels Diener, they, they make an okay tag team. I wonder if uh, I wonder if we're going to see more of Wheels. I wouldn't mind uh, bringing Wheels back um, once this pandemic is over and let Cody team with Wheels and uh, let uh, Jake something or cousin Jake um, go out on his own and uh, become the monster that I feel that he can be, which I mentioned last uh, on my last podcast. Uh, but I- I'd like to see Wheels again. I hope it's not just a one-time thing um, that we see Wheels. Um, the the Diener family is growing. The Diener family is definitely definitely growing. It, it was it was entertaining, and and of course you know you know Ice George the Ice Man um, sneaks in at the end and low blows <laughs> low blows wheels becomes a referee makes a fast count and the North um, retain their titles. Um, is George the Iceman gonna become like a manager figure now for the North? He's 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 been um, on their on their. Um, on their side for the past three weeks now, and uh, he helps them win a match. And is are we gonna, is he going to be now a regular part of the North? Um, who knows? Who knows? I I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind seeing more of Georgie Iceman. Uh, but uh, by my guess, I get, well I know the North are part of the next uh, set of tapings. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if uh, Georgie Iceman is is there or and if he's not, then it, it was just a. Um, a uh, Canadian pandemic um, managerial gig <laughs> for, for well he wasn't really even he wasn't really the manager he's more like the 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 suck up announcer for uh, for the North uh, the kiss ass announcer for the North basically uh, so um, yeah very entertaining segment and I'm sure we're gonna see more of uh, the Cody uh, compound in the in the future in the future i'm sure they'll be back and i'm sure they'll be filming more matches and um like i said we'll we'll i'm sure we'll see wheels again i'm sure we will see wheels and the rest of the diener family uh especially the guy that just takes off as such running at, at top speed which was very very funny i was i was laughing at <laughs> yeah i just i was just laughing at that that was uh i think he did it twice in the in the segment um but anyway uh, anyway let's move on uh rohit raju Rohit Raju. I want to talk about him for a second because next week he's he's going one on one with with Chase Stevens, and this was a this was a interesting uh, little segment. Uh, Rohit Raju being interviewed, and then uh, Chase Stevens just comes out and and um, Rohit Raju runs him down, and the match is made. 
Rohit Raju going one on one with Chase Stevens. Uh, now, now Chase Stevens. After, he, after he's challenged by Rohit Raju, Chase Stevens says, "I don't even work here." So my my question to to Chase Stevens is, if Chase Stevens doesn't even work there, and he's saying on the air, "I don't even work here." Why would he take it upon himself just to walk out randomly onto an interview segment with Rohit Raju if he doesn't even work there? <laughs> doesn't make doesn't make any sense. But but anyway, the 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 match is made, and I really really hope I really really hope that Rohit Raju does not lose this match to Chase Stevens. I will be watching this match very carefully. This is the probably the one match that I have the most interest in next week because if Rohit Raju loses to Chase Stevens, that's basically Impact Wrestling saying that Rohit Raju is not getting a push. That Rohit Raju, that they feel Rohit Raju, even though he's absolutely more than capable of being a top star in Impact Wrestling. If he loses to Chase Stevens, that's Impact Wrestling saying that they don't have faith in Rohit Raju in being a top star in Impact Wrestling. That's 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 my feeling on that. So Rohit Raju better not lose that match next week. And I know it's been taped and I know the result already happened. They've done a tremendous job in keeping spoilers off the internet. Nobody knows who has uh, won that match except Rohit Raju, Chase Stevens, and uh, the Impact Wrestling roster. Uh, that, those are the only people that know who have uh, who has won that match. So I'm going to be watching next week, and Rohit Raju better not have been booked to lose that match. All right, so... Um, Let's move on. Actually, before I go on to um, a few of the really stupid articles that I've that, I, that I've read this week, uh, I wanted to um, make I I, I want to talk about one more quick thing. One thing that I'm noticing, I'm noticing. Uh, uh, well, for example, um, Tasha Steele's Kira Hogan are are now a team. Uh, Havoc and Nevea, they've come together as a team. Kylie Ray and Susie come together as a tag team. Could we be seeing um, the revival of the Knockouts tag team uh, titles? I think they could be heading in that direction. Uh, It seems like they're putting a lot of tag teams together in the women's division, uh, and they're bringing in uh, a lot more women as well. So who knows? I they could be they could be headed towards uh, um, bringing back the Knockouts uh, tag team uh, titles, which which I'd be all for. I'd be a hundred percent for, and um, they could be heading in that direction with all these uh, tag teams that they're putting together. It just just one. Um, I know uh, BQ, I believe, is going to be talking about this more in detail on on his podcast. But it's just something that that I've noticed and something I was thinking about. And uh, again, I think it would be a, a great uh, great idea. I'm sure we'll if they do that, we're going to see two or three more uh, women's tag teams. Um, in the weeks to come, and um, hopefully the the tag team titles in the knockout division will be coming back. Okay, so I read uh, this week um, some really, 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 really dumb, dumb articles, and I'm gonna on online, and I'm gonna talk about them now. First up, our buddies at WhatCulture.com. <sighs> I, I I really think they have they they have something huge against uh, Impact Wrestling, uh, but they have an article. Uh, they they have a um, one that's called Ten Ways AEW Is Nothing Like TNA," and they're comparing uh, the start of AEW to the start of TNA. And uh, some of the reasons that they have up there that their top ten reasons, and I'm going to read a few of them. I'm going to read a few of them. Um, they said TNA wanted names. AEW wants talent. You know, <laughs> that Dynamite is a better show than TNA Weekly pay per views. 
Okay, so let's let's go back. TNA wanted and names. AEW wants talents. Okay, so let's see. So so TNA had AJ Styles. They brought in Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, Chris Sabin, uh, James Storm, Loki. They they had all those names in the beginning, um, and so they're saying that those were names and not talents. Are they are they out of their minds? Are they out of their minds by by saying AJ? They, they, these weren't household names. They weren't household names. Uh, they were very talented, young, hungry, talented wrestlers that TNA brought in. So what the hell are they talking about? That they wanted names. Uh, sure, in the beginning you might have seen a uh, a um, Kevin Nash or, or a Scott Hall. But, but mainly we had these young, hungry, very talented wrestlers that they brought into TNA. Uh, so yeah, TNA wanted names. AEW wanted talent. You know, so dramatic on on what culture's part there. Uh, so they had, and they they, they said uh, they uh, AEW wrestles in arenas, not asylums. <laughs> okay, they they wrestled in arenas, not asylums. Uh, they, they said AEW had has hardcore fans from the start, uh, and um, AEW has a far more talented roster than than TNA had in the beginning. Okay. First, let's go back to the AEW had hardcore fans from the start. Uh, so they really, they're putting down TNA fans here. Uh, they're quoting, they're saying, TNA's first shows were attended by a ragtag group of professional wrestling fans and casuals who just happened to be in the area. You know, they came in with no real expectations and left with those non-existent presumptions met. Ooh, what culture getting so dramatic here? <laughs> TNA had to build a fan base from scratch, fighting preconceptions and assumptions every step of the way. Ooh, ooh I'm getting chills just reading that. First of all, first of all, every promotion has to build a fan base from scratch. In 1962, Capital Wrestling, which became the WWWF. They were a struggling promotion. Buddy Rogers was their champion and they were struggling to get a fan base. They were struggling from the start. They had to build a fan base and they brought in Bruno San Martino and they were able to build a fan base around Bruno San Martino. Ring of Honor had to build a fan base from scratch. MLW had to build a fan base from scratch. And yes, TNA had to build a fan pay, fan base from scratch. So what? So how come how come you're not comparing AEW? Uh, what culture? How come you're not comparing AEW to to Ring of Honor? How come we're not seeing ten ways AEW is better than Ring of Honor? How come we're not seeing ten ways AEW is nothing like MLW? How come we're not seeing ten ways why why AEW is nothing like WWE? How come we're not seeing that? Why why are you picking on TNA here? Why are you picking on T TNA here? And um, you're saying AEW had a far more talented roster than TNA in the beginning and they're in arenas not asylums well you know let's let's go back let's go back to the beginning for TNA uh, when Jeff and Jerry Jarrett decided on that fishing trip that they wanted to start uh, another promotion um, they went to uh, to get financing financial backing from uh, Panda Energy and unless some unless I'm not mistaken Panda Energy is not the multi billionaire father of Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Jarrett that will just throw money that just throws money to will throw money to them and let them sign whoever they want and let them build any way they want to build um wasn't the case Aaron. look at Tony Khan's dad is uh, I don't not not sure what his name is but Tony Tony Khan's father is worth 10.2 billion dollars Ten point two billion dollars. Tony Khan himself has in has invested a hundred million dollars in AEW. Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Jarrett didn't have that luxury. They didn't have that luxury. They had to get financing for their first show. Just to get that first show off the off the ground. And they brought in who they were able to bring in. They didn't have the luxury of having a hundred million dollars to get this thing started they didn't have the luxury of a cody rhodes a young bucks the young bucks kenny omega 
all who decided that they wanted to make a difference, that they wanted to, you know, challenge the WWE to give the fans something different. They didn't have those names. Anybody who was remotely as big as those names back then that had interest in coming to uh, TNA and they technically weren't able to afford him. They didn't have the money to sign someone like a Chris Jericho right off the bat um, to offer him the biggest contract that, that he's ever gotten. They didn't have that luxury. You know, it all comes down to money, you know, and they didn't have the money that Tony Khan is getting from his dad. They didn't have that money. Okay, so so let's let's get off that stupidity immediately. So stop stop comparing, you know, AEW in the beginning to TNA in the beginning. It's it's just it's stupid. It's just absolutely stupid. Uh, what else do we have here? What else did they say? Um, yeah, again, AEW had a far, has a far more talented roster than TNA, and that goes back to money having a father that's worth 10.2 billion dollars i'm going to say it again because that's the point and 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 the number one reason on this stupid list is having tony khan and his billionaire father so if that is the reason why aew is able to be better in the beginning than tna it's because of billionaire the billionaire cons you've answered your own question this article is absolutely ridiculous and uncalled for all it is is what culture taking another knock at at tna that that tna and impact wrestling you know here the number one beginning with the billionaire backing that's the reason and they, they have it right here it's the number one reason that on the list the, the top 10 list is number one reason beginning with billionaire backing so that's why that's why aew in the beginning is nothing like tna in the beginning you've answered your own question article is stupid there's no reason to put up this article it was dumb again just just another just another reason for what culture to knock tna okay let's go to another dumb 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 article that i read and it was on all everything entertainment.com the title of the article is What Went Wrong with TNA Wrestling. Now, the person that wrote this article didn't do any research at all. Didn't do any research at all um, before writing this article. And and let's 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 um let's prove why. <laughs> Let's prove why. Okay, one of the things is is branding. You know, one of the one of the reasons um, that he feels one of the things he feels went wrong with TNA wrestling was was the way um, TNA and Impact is branding um, is branding themselves. So they said, hey, here it is. How many different? Here is he wrote this. You know, how many different names has TNA been called over the years? They started as TNA Wrestling, then they became TNA Impact Wrestling. Then TNA Impact. Then they became TNA Impact Cross the Line. Then just Impact. Then Global Force Impact Wrestling. And now just Impact. No. Absolutely wrong. 100% wrong. They've been called TNA NWA or NWA TNA. They've been called TNA Wrestling. Then they went to Impact Wrestling. Then they went to Global Force Wrestling and then back to Impact Wrestling. So it was NWA uh, Total Nonstop Action. Then it was TNA, Impact Wrestling, Global Force Wrestling, and then back to Impact Wrestling. He's saying, uh, first of all, TNA Impact Cross the Line is a video game. It was never, it was, they were never, they never changed the name to TNA Impact Cross the Line. That's the name of a video game. Uh, they never called themselves Global Force Impact Wrestling. It was Global Force Wrestling. Jeff Jarrett came in. He had the name Global Force Wrestling. They changed it to Global Force Wrestling. We all know what happened with Jeff Jarrett. They went back to Impact Wrestling. Okay, so they went through basically four name changes. Let's let's look at the let's look at the uh, yeah. So he he says they were started. They started as TNA Wrestling. They, they, they didn't start as TNA wrestling. It was NWA TNA. So th this guy has it all wrong here. Has it all wrong here. So they've gone through four name changes. Let's look at the WWE. They've, they've gone through four name, name changes as well. They were Capital Wrestling. Uh, 
They went the Worldwide Wrestling Federation to World Wrestling Federation to World Wrestling Entertainment. So they went. They've been through four name changes as well. Big deal. And he was, but why? Why change your name so many times? Do you really think it's the name of your business that's holding you up rather than the business model or people running the business? Shut up, dude. You don't even know. You don't even know the names of the. You don't even know what they were calling themselves. You know, <laughs> the worst. The, the funniest one, though, like I said, is TNA, TNA Impact Cross the Line. This guy thinks that they were calling themselves TNA Impact Cross the Line when um, uh, that's the name of, like I said, a video game. So it's just, it's just again, this guy's not doing any research. Then he talks about. Then he talks about failures of homegrown talent. TNA's failures of homegrown talent. He's like, I think this one is the. I think this one is the big one for me. TNA had a loader roster of stars before they really became stars, with guys like CM Punk, Tyler Black, aka Seth Rollins, John Moxley, you know, Consequences Creed, Shinsuke Nakamura, and he has a few more on the list: Samoa Joe, Eric Young, you know. And um, he goes on, with the exception of AJ Styles, TNA failed to turn any of these guys into homegrown talents um, and of their homegrown talents into house, household names. You know, he said, just imagine if they could have done so. You know, okay, let, let's, let's look at that list for a second. Let's look at that list for a second. TNA had a loaded roster of stars, of homegrown talents. You know, Tyler Black, John Moxley, <laughs> Each, Shinsuke Nakamura, each of which, all three of them had one match each in, uh, in TNA. One match each. John Moxley had a dark match that wasn't even aired. And it just happened that uh, when he became, um, he became a little big uh, that they released it on Impact Plus. He had one, one dark match. Seth Rollins, um, T- Tyler Black was involved in a tag team match. Um, at one point, um, let's see that one match, the one tag team match he was in. Um, let's see here. You know, Latin American, Latin American Exchange. Hernandez and Homicide versus Jeff Watson and Tyler Black. Thirty-seven seconds long. Yeah, homegrown talents. You know, they they had they had them for thirty-seven seconds. <laughs> TNA had them for 37 seconds and they and they how could they have how could they have let that talent get away you know they, didn't they see what they had in that, those 37 seconds that he was in TNA you know homegrown talent and Shinsuke Nakamura he's saying he's saying Shinsuke Nakamura Shinsuke Nakamura was 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 homegrown talent that they failed to make it to a household name Shinsuke Nakamura one match against a lick skipper uh, when uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling had a working agreement with TNA you know, so he came over, you know, came over um, um, for a visit and had one match against Alex Skipper, uh, and he went back to, to New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think he was the he was a he might have been the IWGP uh, champion at the time, but no. But this guy, this guy says, uh, yeah, TNA had Shinsuke Nakamura, and they failed to make him into a household name. You know, it's just, it's just such stupidity, such stupidity in this article, and and uh, John. Um, uh, let's see who else. He takes Samoa Joe. Oh no, CM Punk. Let's go back to CM Punk. CM Punk had a, a number of matches, number of matches in uh, TNA. Um, he feuded with uh, with Raven, I believe. Uh, but he wasn't any. He wasn't homegrown talent. You know, the, the year that uh, CM CM Punk was in TNA, uh, he was already an established indie star, and uh, he wrestled for about um, maybe twenty twenty five different promotions uh, in the year that he was with uh, with TNA, and it was just uh, one year. Uh, one year, I think he maybe had ten matches, uh, but. He was not, and uh, he cannot consider CM Punk a uh, TNA homegrown star. I'm sorry, uh, but this but this list is stupid. He's, Samoa Joe, they they made he said they made Samoa Joe. He's saying that Samoa Joe wasn't made into a star in TNA. Samoa Joe absolutely was a star in TNA, as was Eric Young. You know, it's just such such a stupid stupid list. Stupid list, you know. TNA had a loaded roster of stars before they really became stars, you know. And and um, TNA failed to turn them into household names. Then he talks about marketing. He talks about marketing. He's saying he say so. This one jumps out at me. Uh, TNA just didn't market themselves well. They ran shows in Orlando the entire time. Uh, they ran very few house shows and didn't tour the market the way they should have. 
you know, it, it, this is an expert talking. So he's he's knocking that they ran shows in Orlando, but if you go down, if you go down a little bit uh, to management, it says um, that uh, bad management is the number one reason TNA didn't become the new WCW. Uh, TNA was back with money, a great location. So Orlando, who he's they he's knocking Orlando at at at. Uh, at the top of the article, but when you scroll down a little bit, suddenly Orlando has become a great location. <laughs> a great location, and uh, uh, this, this 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 guy is just this just one of the this might have been one of the worst articles that I that I've ever read. You know, he's contradicting himself here. Uh, written by a, a gentleman, I'm going to say his name. His name is Justin Patterson. Uh, written by Justin Patterson, uh, alleverythingentertainment.com. Uh, totally disagree with this article at all, uh, 100%. And he says they made bad decisions. You know, Some of the bad decisions were uh, Aces and Eights. Uh, Aces and Eights was actually very entertaining. I enjoyed it. Um, it says uh, Hogan versus Sting when they had a combined age of over 100. Hogan versus Sting actually was a very good match. I really enjoyed that match, as did a lot of people. Um, wasn't uh, was was much better than 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 the Undertaker versus Goldberg, uh, who also have a combined age of over a hundred. Uh, much more entertaining than that. Uh, who else? Um, oh, he's like uh, talent not getting paid. Talent was getting paid. They 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 maybe they get paid a little later than they should have, uh, but talent was was getting paid. Um, uh, I believe uh, I can't remember who it was, but someone said if we weren't getting paid, we wouldn't be working here. Uh, so talent w- was always getting paid. Uh, this is failed partnership with the NWA. First of all, it wasn't a. Why is that one of the worst decisions uh, that were made? That was made because they decided to break away from from NWA and go on on their own. Uh, that that's a terrible decision. So he goes, uh, it's one of the some of the horrible decisions they've made, and you know, failed partnership with the NWA. Come on, give me a break, man. Give me a break. Give me a break. This is such a this is a really dumb article. And at the end he says, I'm just I'm going to stop there because I'm making myself mad. Ooh, he's getting mad. The guy hasn't done any research at all. You know, any research at all. And he thinks that people that are reading it are are schmucks. That are schmucks. So very, very bad article. Okay, and I am going to uh, end it at that. And I'm going to say thank you very much for lis- listening to me today. I am your host, Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.